Hello and welcome to this Amish video. So today is quite an important uh, lesson, I think, um, especially while I was making this scene in particular. This scene has millions and millions and millions of polygons. I would hate to think how many there are actually. And I realized how important it was to make sure that everything was incredibly optimized so that it would render on my eight gigabyte GPU um, when there's gonna be millions and millions, maybe billions of polygons. So I couldn't use the standard duplication uh, where necessary I should have used duplicate linked or collection instances. And I realized some people may not know what that is. So I'm gonna just do a very quick overview of the standard duplication, duplicate linked and collection instances and various use cases for each as well. Right, so you have your object and you want to copy it and you want to make another version. The most common method is shift D. So shift and D and then you just move it across over any axis, X, Y, Z. Uh, let's just move it on the X axis and move it over here. And now we have an exact copy of the first one, but this does share some information. So for example, we can see over here that it shares some of the materials. So the material information is exactly the same. So if you change the materials on one, it will change the materials on the other. However, if we go to the object data properties, we can see that this now has a separate data properties information. So if I go into edit mode on one and move this over here, this one hasn't copied the information. And because it copies some information and not others, Blender says that it's sometimes called a shadow link. So it's not linking all the information, but it is linking some information. And in general, when you copy one object to another, you do really kind of want it to copy the materials. But then if you do want to change the materials, just make sure that you go to the object and you click on the material you want to change and make it a, a new user. So now if we change this one to make this to be white, this is gonna be the stem here. We can see that it's only changing that one. So let's bring this back to that one. So now it's just a, an exact copy. So, right, so that is just standard duplication. And I think that that one is probably the easiest to understand. Okay, so what is a limitation in the standard duplication? And because it duplicates all of the mesh data and it makes a new copy, which isn't linked to the first one, what Blender has to do is, when you make a duplicate with standard shift D, you can look over here and Blender goes, okay, there's a vertex here, there's a vertex here, there's a vertex here, there's a vertex here. And then it goes to the next one and goes, okay, there's a vertex here and this one here. And that adds to the actual amount of faces to the scene. So if you see down here, there's 39,000 at the moment. If I duplicate it, there's now 89. And then if it's duplicated, there's 118 and so on and so on and so on. So if I go all the way up like this and we just start duplicating these, so how many is there now? There's uh, roughly 17, not including the camera. And then I just start duplicating this over here like this. You can see that Blender is starting to struggle. I'm just curious how many it's gonna be able to render. So let's just keep doing that. And then, okay, this is definitely gonna break my GPU. And then let's duplicate it again upwards. Um, let's just let's just see if I can break it. So let's just duplicate this again. And before I even started, the VRAM was already at six gigabytes. So okay, that has failed. So that is not rendering on the GPU. Okay, so the standard duplication to copy that object a million times didn't work. The viewport was going to, getting very, very slow um, and it just generally wasn't working very well. So what is another method? And that is using Alt-D and that is called a duplicate linked. So if I go over to here to this object and we can see that this is the object data, if I do Alt-D, oh, no, let me just turn on screencast keys. Do Alt-D, move that over we can see that this one still has the same object data as this one. So if I go to edit mode and change one, it changes the other as well. But you can see it has been given a new name. So what that means is, is that previously when Blender was trying to add up all the vertices for all the objects, it already knows what it's looking for. So it, it, can, say, it can say, okay, there's a vertex here, here, here on this one, but in this one, it says, well, I already know where the vertices are. I just need to know the location. So that saves tremendously on VRAM usage. So we can see here that the number of faces is 29,000. 
if I duplicate this over with duplicate linked, we can still see it's 29,000, 29,000, 29,000. This isn't adding to the scene. So now if I start doing the same thing, so Alt D this across, you can see how much faster this is as well. And then let's just do it again. So Alt D. It's so much faster than before. And we already have, do we have 5,000 objects? Okay, we have a lot of objects here. <laughs> okay, let's go into camera view and... Oh, I don't have a camera. Let's just add a camera real quick. And then let's just render and see how long this takes to calculate this, this huge block of objects. And we can already see that the VRAM is still only at 2.8 when previously it was about 6 for, I don't know, a fraction of the amount. I'm not sure what's going on here, but oh, we can already see it started rendering. So that already is I hopefully I can get across the impact of using Alt D wherever possible. Alt D is a huge lifesaver when it comes to VRAM usage. You can add as many of these as you like and it will still render fine. Okay, one thing that also makes Alt D quite unique is that if there's an object and you do Alt D across and then you can add modifiers to that. So you can give that one a wireframe, and this one's going absolutely funky. Uh, <laughs> whereas the original still looks normal. And that can be quite useful that you're making the exact mesh copy, but you still want to change things in a certain way. So you might want to add, make a plant a wireframe instead. Okay, a cool thing to remember with Alt D is that you can also scale it and, and rotate it in different ways. So you can do Alt D, scale this one, move it over here. Make, let's make another copy and scale this one bigger and this won't be using any more VRAM. It might use a very, very minimal amount of VRAM, but in general, you can make this plant, make it look like it's a totally different bush and a totally different object simply by rotating it and scaling it and, and doing that as many times as you like to make it look more unique. Okay, so now let's talk about collection instances and that actually works a lot like doing Alt D on one of the objects but instead it does it for all of the objects inside a collection. So what I did here is I added loads of plants and I pressed M and added new collection and added them into plant set one. And that then reflects over here. So these are all inside here. If I do it the same again, move to new collection, plant set two, you can see that these all get moved into a new collection here. So let's just delete this one for now. Right, so we now have this collection and Let's say that we want to make a duplicate of this one and we can go over to here and just do shift A, add a collection instance and click this one here. And now we have an exact copy of this one. So if we edit anything from this collection, the locations, anything over here, if we add any modifiers to this one, we can see that this one is an exact copy of everything inside that collection. So even if we change this thing over here, just move this around, we can see that it's just an exact copy. And a lot of people, I do find that they don't realize that their, their collection doesn't need to be in the center. Because let's say you're working, let's just delete this one, let's say you're working on a scene, you make a, a set of objects, you move them over to the corner over here, and you think, okay, that's a nice collection over there. Let's add a new one here. So we could do Shift A, Collection Instance, and we can see that the object is now offset for some reason. Why is it over here when we wanted it to be over here? And that is because when you make the collection instance, Blender is taking the origin for that collection instance as 000. So if I move the original objects back to 000, you can see that that now looks much more how it should do. But that's actually easy to fix. The original collection doesn't actually need to be at 000. So let's just go over here, click one of the objects in the collection, and let's just make an origin do shift and right click to add a cursor. Let's just say we want the origin for this collection to be here. So with one of the objects selected, go to object properties, go to collections, make sure that you have the collection selected from here and click this one and click set offset from cursor. Let's just move back so we can see. Set offset from cursor. Now this collection instance has the right origin. If we want the origin to be at the top, let's put that there and then just select this object and go to origin set offset from cursor. Now we can see the origin point is here. 
Okay, so another thing to note is that any object can also be shared between multiple collection instances. So let's say we have this plant set two and we want to add a collection instance as plant set two. So we've got this one over here, but then we also want this object to be in this collection instance as well as this one. So go over to here, and we go over to the object properties tab here, we can add it to another collection, plant set two. So now it appears inside this one, so they're both together. And not only that, if you were to add an empty, for example, you can go over to object properties, click on instancing, click on collection, and you can actually add a collection instance to that empty. So what is an actual use case for this kind of stuff? And one thing that I found a very good use case is actually when you have lots of objects all together. So let's say we go to our dining table set and you add this one here, we click append and and but everything comes as a separate part and you have to make sure that when you select any of them, you have to select the parent so they all move together. And in, in 3D Studio Max, there's a thing called groups where you can group everything together so everything moves as one object. And that is essentially what you can do with collection instances. So let's say you're making a table and let's just move this up. You're making a table and you want to make a multiple copies. So you do Alt D rotate this 180 degrees, but now we have so many objects when we only have two dining table sets. So one thing that you can do is find out which collection this is in and it's in dining table set. So let's go over to here and add a shift A collection instance of this dining table set. And we can see the origin is not in the right place. So let's select the parent object, shift S cursor to selected, and then we can go over to the collections and do offset from cursor. So now we can see that the, the cursor is in the right place. We can right click and click adjust empty size and then just move the mouse, just so it's a bit more user friendly. And then let's move this up, rotate this 180 degrees. And now we have a much more usable interface. So let's just move this over. So we have a very big table and now we have objects which are much easier to use. Okay, now what you could actually also do is just hide the original one and then you can just duplicate this over so you have all of the objects which are much easier to use. But one thing about using it in this way is that if you decide later I don't actually want this and you were to delete it, it deletes it from all the other collection instances and it's just much easier to use. Okay, so what is an even easier way to use collection instances. And after I found this add-on, I'm now using it all the time. I find that I should have used it in the past, but I didn't because it was so difficult and complicated to use, but this add-on kind of supercharges that. So let's see how this works. So if you download this add-on, and then if we just go and delete all these collection instances, and then we have, let's say we're laying a table and we have all these sets of objects, but we want these to move as one. We're gonna go over and edit preferences and go to add-ons and then let's just, just install that add-on and then it's called quick instances. And it shows you the hotkeys here. And what you just wanna do is select all these objects and then just do control G. And there we go, we now have a collection instance. So what this has done is that it has taken the original object it has moved it to a new scene called library and it's put it in here and it's put it to the center so that the origin is going to be in the right place and and what's left is the actual collection instance but let's say okay this is nice but i want to edit it i don't want to keep going back to the library just click on the object and press tab then it takes you to the original object so you can now edit this one freely you can change the materials they don't want to eat so much so they're just going to remove a few plates and then if you click off the object and press tab, you get taken back to the actual original scene. It doesn't name it, and I don't know if I'm missing something, but it would be nice if it gave you a prompt when it makes it to say, what do you want this to be called? So you can call this dining, dining set, and then we have a perfect collection instance. Okay, another example of how this might be useful is that if you, let's say, for example, have a, have a group of objects like this and you you're in a uh, restaurant setting and you want all of these objects to go all around the restaurant, but they're generally gonna be the same object. So I'm just gonna select them all and do Control G. And there we go, all the objects are now gonna be acting as one object. But what I do find is the origin is in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna hit Tab. I'm just gonna select this object here. I'm gonna add a cursor here. 
Then I'm gonna click here and say set offset from cursor. Now if we click off and go tab, the object is now gonna be with the right origin point. Adding this add-on with Control G makes collection instances such a breeze to use and it actually organizes everything quite nicely uh, with a new library scene, which means that you don't need to hide anything, you don't need to worry about origin points and everything like that. Okay, so I have a question um, because I can't seem to find the answer online, but maybe someone watching this video knows the answer and then I'll pin your comment because I found I just can't seem to find the right answer and I think I might have found a workaround, but it seems a little bit clunky. So. What I'm gonna do is, so I have these collection here called uh, Plants Hydra. So if I add Shift A and add that one here, the offset is in the wrong place. So I'm gonna select this object, cursor to selected. And then for the collection instance, I'm gonna set the cursor offset, the offset from the cursor. So now this uh, is in the right place. So we can do the same for this one. If I was to add the collection instance, the rosemary, we can see that the, ob the offset is in the wrong place. So we can do Shift S, cursor to selected, and then also set offset from cursor. So this now also works fine. But one thing with collection instances is that these two collections are inside this collection. So if I was to do Shift A, uh, collection, and then add this one here, we can now see that the offset is from the origin and not from the object itself. But because these objects are in their own collections, whether I set offset from the cursor, it doesn't make any difference. But let's say that we want this cursor to be over here. I'm trying to figure out how that works. And one way that I made that kind of work is let's say, for example, we select this object, cursor to select it. Then I add it to a new collection called assets, and then I can set set offset from cursor like that. So now the cursor is in the right place, but now this object, is duplicated twice. So I then remove that. So now so now the offset is in the right place and there's not two objects, two versions of the same object. Is that the right way to do it? That feels a little bit wrong to me. <laughs> uh, but if that is the right way, then if you add a collection of a collection of a collection instance, um, then make a, <laughs> then just do it that way. But I feel like that feels a bit wrong. So anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's it for today and uh, thank you for watching and I will hopefully be releasing a lot more videos lately uh, in, in, in some, uh, uh, hopefully be releasing some <laughs> Bye! Okay, so as you can imagine, um, all of this takes a very long time. So the, the animation which I'm talking about is actually on iMesh where you can actually download this whole scene yourself and learn how I put it all together. It's all using collection instances and in general, this took a freaking long time to put together. So I just wanted to say to you guys, if you feel like you want some really cool models, we now have over 1,405 assets, models, free materials, full scenes, uh, and freebies for everybody. Um, so if you're curious and you want to download some models, then do check out iMesh. I think one thing that makes us very, very attractive is the fact we now have 1,400 assets for only $99. So that is $99 for five, one, four, five. That is only seven cents per model. So I think that is kind of crazy. Where, whereas uh, like other shops, if you wanted the similar amount of assets in your library, that could cost you anywhere between, I don't know, $5 to $20 per model. But if we times that by, I don't know, $7 per model, that would cost you almost $10,000. And we're giving it away for $99, which I think is mad. And the quality of our models, we really like to try and set a standard that everything we release is just absolutely workable and renderable. You can then just go to each model and just download every single one. So this is seven cents, 14 cents, 21 cents, 28 cents. So yeah, check out iMesh. We are an ever-growing library and we really appreciate the support. So thank you very much.